What's going on everybody and welcome back to your Saskatchewan Stags franchise mode. We're back baby. NHL 19 is just about over. It's almost over. NHL 20 is so close I can almost taste it. I have some super exciting NHL 20 news. Once I'm able to tell you what it is, you guys will be the first to know. I'm just waiting on the A-OK. -okay. But we're still here with our Saskatchewan franchise mode. Now there hasn't been a video for I think a little bit over a week and I completely underestimated how long it would take for me to actually move. We moved into our first house, ended up purchasing my first house, and I thought it was going to be a quick little, you know, push everything in and set everything up, boom, good to go. No, I had to wait almost a week for internet. I had to wait for this and that, and we're finally in the setup. Everything is slowly coming together. I'm not 100% done, but I'm slowly, slowly getting there, and we're going to do big things for NHL 20, but we have to close out Saskatchewan in the right way. So this is going to be the last, not the last episode, don't worry, calm down. This is going to be the last proper episode. After this, I'm going to speed run it. I'm going to see some players retire. I want to see how many points Hiroyuki, I want to see how many points Chubbs is going to have, because we're really going to have to kick some ass, because these guys are still young, 27 years old. They got 10 more seasons left in them, easy. So we're going to do a bit of a speed run. In the next episode, I'm going to just record a whole bunch and basically voice over it and then we're going to see how many points these guys end up with. Maybe we'll do a final three episodes or something like that, but NHL 20 is less than two weeks away. It's literally right around the corner, but I can't just leave the stags high and dry because we had a 61, 18, and 3 record headed into the postseason. Now we're looking for Stanley Cup number three. This is going to be a a very very tough first round we got the Dallas Stars they're 50 22 and 10 they're red hot 8 1 and 1 in their last 10 but we are no slouch either 8 2 and 0 in our last 10 61 18 and 3 now it's been a little while so let's go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a refresher on how the season went down multiple 100 point scores obviously the Japanese trio followed by Profetti Adam Boquist Jake Descore we got Valerie Chubby Chubby Chubasov, not making 3.9 million anymore. Guy got a little bit of a pay increase, 5.1 million, still a very friendly contract. And then we're gonna try to get Gino his last Stanley Cup ring. At 41 years old, this guy had 42 tucks. Age is just a number with Gino, the Russian machine. Oh my God, 42 goals at 41 years old. That's crazy. Even guys like Norm Clarkson, 56. That is quite a year for a third liner. I mean, playing with Evgeny Malkin probably helps quite a bit. Exact same thing with Afina Sankov. But we are definitely poised for another Stanley Cup run with the man between the pipes, Mount Rossmore, 45 and 13. But shout out to Johnny Forrest. You can't forget our new addition went 14 4 and 2 with one shutout since coming over from the Winnipeg Jets so there's how our team is looking let's have a look at the Dallas Stars obviously we're a little bit familiar with their team they have Austin Matthews they have Clayton Keller so they've definitely beefed up over the course of this franchise mode but we've played them a few times we've actually had pretty good luck playing these guys so oh my god look at their squad Clayton Keller Austin Matthews Michael Dalgol our all right, he hit the jackpot playing with those two guys. Stanislav Nabokov, you think that guy's Russian? Maybe. Uh, Tyler Sagan, Jamie Benn, so those guys coming to the end of their career. So Tyler Sagan is holding up a little bit better than Jamie Benn, although he does have two years on him. Uh, Mark Jankowski, Brett Connolly, so they're stacked. Dallas seems to always have a pretty solid roster, and we know with their giant two-headed monster, John Klingberg, and 93 overall Miro Heiskanen, how are ya? We got Ryan Murray, Julius Honka, so yeah, they're stacked. We know they're stacked, and they have Matt Murray between the pipes. So this is definitely... Definitely not going to be an easy first round at all. We are facing a 50 win team. They are 8-1-1 one one in their last 10. Let me turn on injuries and let's get this thing underway. 
Now I can't start this video off without mentioning the two absolute legends we have down there in the American Hockey League. And yes, we did it. We signed Ty Ronning and we signed Sidney Crosby. They're playing together with Sheldon Kim. Guy hits the jackpot playing with Ronning and Crosby. Unreal. So hopefully they can get themselves a Calder Cup, add to Crosby's resume. Hopefully Crosby's gonna add to that insane resume with a Calder Cup. Hopefully the Regina Renegades can win their second in franchise history. So here we go. This is going to be the last playoff video we are going to have out. Obviously, we're going to be having more playoffs, but I'm not going to be slow simming every single game. We're just going to do a little bit of a speed run. I might even live stream it. Let me know what you guys think about that. Ty Ronning's loving the postseason already. All right, here we go. First period against the Dallas Stars, and it's 1-0. Austin Matthews on Mount Rushmore. Period number two. Okay, 3-0. Then Matthews gets two, and there he is, Michael Dalgol. We gave this guy a chance, brought him out of the gutter. He was a 76 overall AHL player. We gave him a chance. He blossomed into a top six winger, and he scores against his former team. You absolutely hate to see it, but Cole Profetti, he scores on Matt Murray. We are being outshot, which is something that doesn't usually happen, and the Dallas Stars and Austin Matthews take game one. 3-1. to one. Not really the ideal start, not gonna lie to you, but we had 60 wins in the regular season. I'm not worried. We're gonna bounce back from this. Historically, in the playoffs, the Stags are a little slow to start out. We don't usually sweep teams. We are a flair for the dramatic. We love the uh, reverse sweep. We did that against Pittsburgh in the Stanley Cup Final. We usually don't start out super hot. So here we go. Let's see if we can bounce back here with a win in game number two. We have yet to register a shot over three minutes in period number one on the power play and it's 2-1 Justin Falk Adrian Kempe and Tyler Sagan they start off 2-0 but Justin Falk the vet looking for his last chance at a Stanley Cup ring he gets one goal period number two can we tie it up oh my god who the Michael Dow Cole why are you doing me like this 32 to 18 are the shots. Oh my god. Are we just simply running into a hot goalie here? Jesus, come on, boys. You're better than this. I know you are. You're much better than this. Five to one. Five goals on 30 shots. I mean, is it just simply running into a hot goalie? We're closing in on 40 shots, and there it is. I feel like we're doing everything to score. We're just not finding the back of the net. We're down 2 nothing, dropping both games at home, a place where we're usually pretty damn good, and Valerie Chubby Chubasov has been injured with a sprained ankle. April 25th. So remember when I went ahead and I signed two absolute legends? Well, it's time to bring one up. The man, the myth. The legend, Ty freaking Ronning, back in the NHL, third line right winger. We moved Gino Malkin up with Cole Perfetti and Jake DeScore. We're going to see if that can spark this line a little bit. Our first line as well has really done nothing two games in. You hate to see it, but Ty Ronning back in the mix. I got these guys specifically for injury. You know, I could have called up Crosby, but he's got three goals in two games. He's the rock down there in Regina, so I think calling up Ty Ronning is probably the right call because we've only scored two goals in two games and we've been outscored eight to two. That is not good enough. This is not typical Stags fashion. This is not what you would typically see in a Stags hockey game, but we're on the road here. We're in the, I think it's called the American Airlines Center in uh, Dallas, Texas. Here we go, period. Number one, and it's two nothing, baby. Norm Clarkson, and it only took him less than three minutes. 1624 of the first period. Guess who gets on the score sheet? Ty freaking Ronning, straight out of the minors, I guess you could call it. What a beast. He scores right away. Norm Clarkson answers right back. All right, period number two. Oh, baby, it's 5 nothing. The big kid from Edmonton, Adam Boquist and Gucci. Take that, Dallas, going into the third. Oh, baby, you absolutely love to see a tie running goal, and he gets another one. You cannot make this stuff up. Jake DeBoer, 7 nothing. Sujimoto, 8 
8 to nothing. Oh my god. Sujimoto 9 to nothing in a playoff game. Tyron in two goals. Jamie Ben says no shutout for you, but it's okay because we put up 9 against the Stars. Oh boy. Okay, Tyron looking for a Hattie. He's not going to get it, but he gets two big goals. He scores the first goal of the third period. Two goals, three shots. Honestly, man, you love to see it. You can't really write a better story than that. Oh, my God. All right, going into game number four. Chubbs is back. I talked to the team doctors, and they think it's best you let your ankle heal for one more night. We're going to meet you in Saskatchewan on the Sunday. Take Friday night off. Come sit in the press box, and you can watch this one. Sprained ankles are nothing to mess with. Let's see if the boys can continue to roll here. Tie Ronning with two. Let's see if we can keep it up. Period number one. It's 2-1. And Hiroyuki and Jake DeBoer. All right. Period number two. Still 2-1. We have the lead. We have the lead in place. I'd love to see an extra insurance marker and not a John Klingberg goal. That's the opposite of what I wanted to see there. Power play for them, but that's a big kill. Tyron and dumping pucks, doing what he does best. A Gucci. There you go. He makes it 3 2. The go ahead goal with 10 minutes left. Can we fight it off? Tie the series back up. Headed to Saskatchewan. Oh my god. Adrian Kempe says, No, no, no. Wait a minute. Hold up. Not happening. Going into overtime and the Dallas Stars and Michael Dow goal. Oh. This guy's making me pay. I traded him back to the Winnipeg Jets. Then he signs with the Dallas Stars. He's having a monster postseason. I think that's his third or fourth goal. Oh boy. Okay, so we go down three to one. This is not good. This is absolutely not good. This is not what you want. This is the opposite of good. No, no, no. Not happening. Sujimoto's got six points in four games, but it's not looking good for the rest of the boys. Chubbs has to come back in the lineup. I'm going to move Ronning down to the fourth, put Gino right there. Let's spread out the scoring a little bit, all right? We went ahead and we scratched Franzen. Ty Ronning's a big game player, and we need him here in game number five because this is not looking good at all. Generally, we're not like this. We usually have a slow maybe first two games, and then this is kind of more like us. We win 9-1, to one, and then we usually go on from there and win the series. I mean, that one was close. It was a one-shot game, but we are down. Our backs are up against the wall. We usually do pretty well in the face of adversity. Here we go. It's do or die, boys, in front of your home fans. We already lost twice, but Iguchi, he comes in. He scores a big goal. I was going to say we already lost twice in front of our home fans in the Tim Hortons arena. Arena. Can't happen again, period number one, and it's 1-1. One, one. All right, so Matthews and Aguchi, the big boys are out to play. We're being outshot like crazy, going into period number two. All right, it's a 1-1 one, one contest. If we go into overtime, I will go ahead and slow sim this one. I'll jump in right into the action, 30 shots apiece. Oh boy, it's going to be a tight one. Oh man, I would love a Tyron and goal. I would love a Tyron and goal on the power play, but Austin Matthews, was that one shorthanded? Oh my god, no, no, no. Three minutes left. You're going to let this one slip away? Oh wow. The Dallas Stars, come on, come on. 30 seconds, 8 seconds. And another game in front of our home fans. We had three games in the Tim Hortons Arena. We had three games in the Tim Hortons arena, and we scored a whopping three goals. That's it. Three goals in three games. That is simply not good enough, and your Saskatchewan Stags get bounced in five games in the postseason. You absolutely hate to see it. I was not expecting that. After a 60-win campaign, we lose. I mean, the Dallas Stars were a pretty damn good team, not going to lie. Um, Vegas, the best team on paper, got rid of the Minnesota Wild in five games. Well, you know what? Good luck to Dallas. Good luck to Michael Dal Cole. Go get a Stanley Cup ring. Unfortunately, we let this one kind of slip away, but it's not all bad because we can go ahead and send Ty Ronning down and he can hopefully go ahead and try for a Calder Cup. So let me do that and then we will pay close attention to the Regina Renegades.
All right, the boys are back. Ty Ronning had that excellent game in Game 3, but unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be. But good luck to the Regina Renegades. Hopefully, they go ahead and win themselves their second Calder Cup in franchise history. I believe they won it in their first year, year number one. I believe so. Um, McGregor's been injured. That's fine. I think if we win here, we should move on. There you go. We're 7-2 and two in the postseason. Moving on to the Calder Conference Finals against the Charlotte Checkers. A 1-1 series here against Charlotte going into Game 3. There you go, 7-4. Oh boy, we are rolling. A 2-1 overtime win and we are off to the Calder Cup Finals. Who do we got? We have the Stockton Heat, which is the Calgary Flames affiliate. We're up 2-1. Oh my god, injuries like crazy. Everyone's coming back. We're up 2-1 here, looking to go 3-1. Sheldon Kim has been injured, 6-5 overtime win. We can win the Calder Cup here on this Saturday night. And there it is, Sidney Crosby and Ty Ronning, our Calder Cup champions. Crosby with 22 points in 19 games. Okay. He's probably a little bit too good to be playing in the American Hockey League, but hey, come on. No one needs no one needs to know that. Ty Ronning also had 16 and 17, and you can't forget Philip Voracek who was a fourth overall pick last year for your Saskatchewan Stags. He ended up having actually a phenomenal rookie campaign. 60 points in 82 games, a plus 53. This guy's definitely going to crack the NHL roster for next year. I'm pretty excited about that guy. But Ty Ronning had 16 and 17. Not bad after a quick stint there with the big club, but Calder Cup champion. At least I was able to get Crosby a Calder Cup ring. Add to that resume. And look at Florida. They're actually up 2 nothing. So could this be Oscar Gormley's first Stanley Cup? Can he do it? He's usually golfing, but not this year. He is now a Stanley Cup champion. There you go. All right, that's impressive. Joining some elite company and we win the draft lottery? What? How did we win the draft lottery? Jesus Christ. Oh my God. I totally forgot we had Toronto's pick. Okay, we have to be the luckiest team in NHL history. We just won the draft. Where did Toronto finish? Oh my God. I need to see this. Hold on. What the hell just happened? We just freaking won the draft lottery? Are you kidding me? Okay, so Crosby and Malkin both retire, and look at that. Sidney Crosby retires with 1,887 points. You can't write that. That is just too perfect. That 8-7 following him everywhere. That's awesome. As well as Evgeny Malkin, so they both call it quits. One of these players ended off their career with a ring, and that's going to be Sidney Crosby with the Calder Cup. Gino, unfortunately, doesn't get that extra Stanley Cup ring. Tyler Seg in, Jeff Skinner, all calling it quits. Kyle Palmieri, anyone else I recognize? Any other Saskatchewan stag legends? Jesper Fast, how are ya? Uh, let's check out Tendies here, see what goalies retired. Uh, any big names? Braden Holpe, Freddie Anderson, Bobrovsky, Darcy Kemper, who carved out a 200-win career. Uh, Linus Olmark, Casey DeSmith, so a bunch of players calling it quits. Oscar Dance goes 5-1, but never gets another shot in the NHL. But hold on, let me just backtrack a little bit here. We just won the draft lottery? What? How does that work? Um, where the hell did Toronto finish? Like, I don't remember them being, like, I know they were a bad team, they weren't great, but I don't really think they were even in, like, the bottom five. Were they even in the bottom five? Um, no, like, they were the, ch okay, they were the 22nd place team. They moved up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spots in the draft lottery. They move up ten and we had their pick, which is just insane. Wow. Okay. I'm very impressed. I'm shocked. Uh, but seriously, like, this luck has to run out eventually. We've had quite a few top three picks. And I knew that was going to be a top ten pick. But we jump up ten spots and win the draft lottery. That's a little bit ridiculous. I don't even know who is in the draft class. Seriously, who is it? I didn't even pay attention, really. 
We have Dorian Alcock, who is a really good player out of the queue. We have Kari Altonen, scouted to go number two. He's another big center out of the Liga. Zachary Zajac, who is another big center. So the first four are all centers, Yuri Nesterov, and then Mikhail Nazland, who's 6'5". But it's either going to be Alcock or Altonen, uh, so another center. Do we go with a Euro? Do we go with a French-Canadian? Um, what do we do? What do we do here? Do we, we're going to pick a center no matter what, or we could trade the pick. Uh, but Dorian Alcock is scouted to be the first overall pick, so I don't see why we wouldn't go ahead and select him. That kind of just fell into our lap. Uh, let's have a look at the awards. Seriously, I was not expecting that. That was completely out of left field. The Florida Panthers win their first Stanley Cup in franchise history. That's awesome. And they ended up facing the Dallas Stars. Unfortunately, Michael Dow Cole does not get another Stanley Cup ring. Art Ross goes to Hulkenberg. We have Linus Solderstrom wins the heart. Okay. Kind of crazy for attendee to win the heart. Then Norris goes to Adam Boquist for the third straight year and his fourth Norris Trophy total. Can we get a thank you, Chicago, in the comments? Uh, Lady Bing goes to Kuhleman. Calder goes to Rupp. Oscar Gormley wins the Conn Smythe. I'm happy for him. Uh, the Vesna goes to Linus Soderstrom as well. Pekka Ukalakinen, whatever his name is, out of Buffalo. He wins the William M. Jennings. Bill Masterton goes to Samuel Moran. Oscar Gormley wins the Frank J. Selkie. Ted Lindsay goes to Soderstrom as well. Uh, the Rocket Richard does not go to Gormley. It goes to, don't call him Russ, Ron Tierney. That's going to be that. Uh, have a look at the AHL, actually. Did Ty Ronning or Sidney Crosby win anything? Uh, this guy, the Willie Marshall Award for the most goals. Okay, so apparently we have the Rocket Richard of the AHL winner there, uh, Orto. That's kind of cool. And the best defenseman goes to Voracek. So we have still quite a young core here in Saskatchewan. And that is an amazing achievement for a rookie in the American Hockey League to win the equivalent of the James Norris. That's crazy. Crosby wins the Calder Cup AHL, the Jack A. Butterfield Trophy. Okay. I didn't know that was a thing. But there you go. We took home some hardware in the American Hockey League. We have the first overall pick. So in the next episode, we're going to get one, two, three years done. I don't know how long I'm going to make them. I don't know what the deal is, but I am going to see if we can finish up this franchise mode. I want to see some players retire. I want to see all that stuff. It should be a fun way to end it, especially now that we have another first overall pick under our belt. But you could see, again, the meme is back. You could see the team change quite a bit because there's a lot of players we got to re sign Cole Perfetti's one of them for this year we got to re-sign probably we're gonna let Justin Falk walk actually um, but Norm Clarkson we got to re-sign we got to re-sign all these guys a bunch of guys are gonna be NHL ready for next year and we now have a first overall pick coming up that we're going to have to work with. As, as well, we also have to re-sign our starting goalie, Russ Delmore, who is not going to be cheap. He's going to be $10.6 million. So the next one is definitely going to be interesting. I'll see you guys in Winnipeg for the NHL entry draft where your Saskatchewan Stags have the first overall pick.